Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's Insurance, where you can sign up for the Shannon's Club and Penrite Oil, offering technical assistance seven days a week. Hello and welcome back to another exciting episode of Classic Restos. Of course not possible without the continued support of Shannon's Insurance and Penrite Oil. If you've got a classic car, bike or truck, make sure it's with the best with Shannon's Insurance. Why not pick up the phone and give Shannon's a call for a quote on 134646. You can even visit Shannon's online where there's promotions and giveaways and make sure you've signed up to become a member of the Shannon's Club where you can also list your car club or even search for another car club there. See more when you visit Shannon's online at shannons.com.au. Look at this gorgeous Oldsmobile Rocket 455 in. Yes, of course, it can use Penrite oil. Penrite oil is the best in the business, along with its coolants as well. It's Australian made, Australian owned, been around since 1926. It's also available within the United States as well. And the Penrite technical assistance line is there to help you seven days a week. Find out more when you visit Penrite online at penrite.com.au. And remember, oil right use Penrite. And on today's show I return to bring you more of the 2014 Carlisle GM Nationals, one of the largest GM events in the world. And no one does it better than Carlisle Events. They are in their 40th year and the 2014 Carlisle GM Nationals celebrates 50 years of the mighty Pontiac GTO. If you're into your General Motors cars, this event even once should be on your bucket list. On last week's episode of Classic Restos, we caught up with GM Events Manager Tyler Staley. Putt showed off his delightful 68 Pontiac. Rick told us all about the Bandit run and what he knew about the actors from the Smokey and the Bandit movie. There was Irv and Becky with their gorgeous 1957 Chev convertible and the list continues. So now please join me as I bring you more of the 2014 Carlisle All GM Nationals here at Carlisle Events. Moving through Building T, a very significant building at every Carlisle event. How are you, Tina? Great, Fletch. How are you? Good, thank you. I love this 69 GTO. It is absolutely beautiful. Tell us the story. Uh, well, it was my father-in-law's car. Uh, he bought it original in 1969, uh, originally to race the car uh, down a quarter mile. Uh, unfortunately, he did pass in 2010. Uh, at that time, my husband inherited the car. Yeah, I've got to say, you, you could have inherited worse. Well, this is true. <laughs> so, uh, how many miles are on the car? Uh, it's about 12,700 original miles. Again, it is original uh, from 1969. So that's not 112,000, that's just 12,000. 12,000, right, right. And most of those miles uh, were done down the quarter mile, right? Right, right. He uh, raced it from uh, 1969 until about 1974. And uh, most of those miles are a quarter mile. Oh, what a cool guy he must have been. <laughs> so cool. Um, also, too, on the screen there on the side glass, the, um, the original receipt, uh, the bill of sale, uh, the options there, uh, a total price of $4,349.11. Well, that 11 cents really <laughs> has gone far. Wouldn't you think the dealership could have just rounded it off and let him off the 11 cents? <laughs> that's true, that's true. Uh, the paint, no, you've, you've, yeah, you've polished it, I know you have, but don't. you're going to tell me, that that's original paint? This is original paint and it is a 1966 Barrier Blue on a 1969 car. Isn't this amazing? This is this is what happens when cars are looked after by one person. There's just no doubt about it. The interior, that's original as well. All original. It hasn't All been redone. Nope, not a not a thing. Not a thing on the car has is, is been redone. We see some originality around the front with the front clip there. It's got some craze marks in it. So it's good to see some, some original paint there, Tina. Right, right. You can definitely tell it's from 1969. <laughs> the engine up front, 400 cubic inches, ram air, four barrel carb. How tough is that? Well, yeah, it was uh, one of the bigger engines and that's why he wanted the bigger engine for the racing. That's awesome. I'm very happy uh, for you guys to uh, have kept this car from the father-in-law. It's just so nice. Yeah, we're real pleased with it. We're, we're having a lot of fun with it. Good for you. Thanks. Continuing on in Building T, 
magnificent building this. How are you, Ray? Very good, Fletch. How about you? Good, thank you. Good. Now, this is the first chance to show you a custom car here at Carlisle, a 1960 Chevrolet wagon, a Brookwood. Now, tell us, what's a Brookwood? What it is is it's basically an Impala wagon, and they had multiple trim levels. Brookwood was the lowest trim level. Um, it didn't have as much chrome, and then you had the Parkwood and the Kingwood, and then I think it went all the way up to the Nomad, even though they stopped making Nomad as a separate wagon. So wow. it's an Impala. Okay, let's look at the engine for a sec. What's going on there, Ray? It's a Ramjet 350, fuel injected. Um, it's a powerful engine, but for a car with, of this weight, it, it's probably just perfect. Yeah. Um, and then it's got uh, uh, the the air conditioning in it, uh, the air ride, but um, the transmissions of the TH 350. Yeah. But um, it's just nice having that. It's my first time I've ever done a classic car and actually put a fuel injected engine in it. So yeah. it was it was a nice change. See, Ray, you're breaking away from the old school there a little. Yeah, I usually like muscle cars. Um, my wife, you know, she likes the muscle cars. She likes Fords. I like Chevys. So it's a funny marriage. But um, <laughs> but this car was so unique when we saw it, and it was an older build that you know you can kind of see the potential in it. I love the fins. I love the look. Yeah. So definitely. Absolutely. I mean, it's just class every step of the way with one of these cars, there's no doubt about that. Now inside, look at the steering wheel. Have a go at the chrome across the centre bar there. I mean, it's just absolutely beautiful. It doesn't matter what angle you look at this wagon from, it's just 10 out of 10 all the way, Ray. Oh, thank you. I what I liked about it too is in the inside, I think the 60 Impalas, the, the dash pods, I think they're a work of art in themselves. If you really like cars and what what was motivating the uh, designers when they created the car. I think the 60s are such a cool year, you know, set of years because you got the jet age, you got the wings, the dash pods. It's just a gorgeous interior when you compare it to cars, you know, of other generations. And just as well we're in 2014 and not back in 1960 because I tell you what, Ray, there's no way in the world back in the bootlegging days you would have been game enough to have that Jack Daniels there in the back there. You must like a drink, but that's ridiculous. Well, you, you got to understand we're from Charlotte. Uh, right near Charlotte, North Carolina, and uh, that's where bootlegging and NASCAR started. So, uh, would you have Jack Daniels tanks in the back? You're pretty popular. What do you got them there for? What are they? Those are actually air tanks. Um, they're stainless steel air tanks, and um, I put two in. No, they're not necessary with with two, uh, you know, air air pumps basically to to for the look of it. Absolutely glorious. Thanks, Ray. Well, we think we thank you guys for coming over to the states and doing the show. This is great to have you here. That's good. Well, you know, you can see it as well if you do a Fletch tour in 2015. This is just the icing on the cake. Classic Restos just gives you an idea of Carlisle because there are literally well, there's th there's hundreds of cars to see. Uh, there's just so many uh, trade displays. Uh, the uh, the vendors with parts, I mean, really trying to cover everything in three big days is, is impossible. But thanks again, Ray. Yeah, thank you, Fletch. I appreciate it. Moving through Building T, we know it's an awesome building. Everything in here is immaculate except for this car here. Zach, welcome to today's show. Yes, hi, Fletch. Um, hi, Zach. This would have to be the most dirty, filthy car I've ever seen. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Uh, but with all due respect, there's a good story here. Tell oh, yeah. Would you like to share it with us? I ah, sure can, yeah. This was my grandmother's car. She bought it brand new in Los Angeles, California, and drove the wheels off of it. It's got 137,000 miles. It's made multiple trips up and down the West Coast. And uh, the neat story is, is I didn't know the car existed until 2006. Um, my, uh, I'm an adopted child, adopted at birth, and I had a ha chance to go to California and met my mother for the first time in 2006. While I was there, she said, do you like muscle cars? And I said, how cool is that? It's like, yeah, I'm a car nut. And so she said, well, after we're done talking, she said, I'll show you your grandmother's Camaro. It's sitting out back in the desert. So this car was sitting in Kingman, Arizona, covered with a tarp. And uh, so it's neat. My love for cars came in my, from my mom and my grandmother. Zach, I can't believe how beautiful that story is. I mean, not only do you reunite with family, you reunite with a car as well. It's yeah. kind of like uncanny, uh, as yeah. though it was meant to happen. Exactly. Yeah, the timing was just perfect. Yeah. So, yeah. And how, and how neat, with all due respect, as dirty as this car is, <laughs> it's original. Now, what are you going to do with it? You, what's your plans? Well, the plan was to start re restoring it immediately, but it's sort of got a lot of 
people around here checking out. And we've actually going to do a little bit of a vote uh, between all the spectators. Say, okay, leave it or restore it. Yeah. So it's, it's it, kind of got its own patina look. I mean, yeah. there'd be a lot of guys that have just hit it with a coat of clear. Right. Yeah, that's true. No, it'll it'll eventually be restored. Yeah. The plan is, as I committed to my mom before yes. she we lost her yes. uh, in 2009, that it would be restored and yes. be passed along in the family. Yeah. So my niece and nephew in Portland, Oregon, will eventually end up with it. So exactly. I think it's a beautiful thing to do, and especially when you look at the other cars in Building T here, <laughs> uh, it has to be inspiration. Yeah. And this car here, look, it's it's a complete car. It's all there, and this baby behind us one day will look every bit as good as something else in here. And boy, that's extra special, isn't it? Exactly right. With a story. Good on you. Car with a story. Thank you very much, Zach. Thank you, Fletch. When it comes time for the best in classic vehicle home and contents insurance, along with an opportunity to sign up to become a member of the Shannon's Club, where you can list your car club there or search for a car club there, find out more when you visit Shannon's online at shannons.com.au. And the finest in oils and coolants, you can't go past Penrite. Been established since 1926, Australian made, Australian owned. It's available here in the United States as well and the Penrite Technical Assistance Line is there to help you seven days a week. Find out more when you visit Penrite at penrite.com.au. You are watching the 2014 Carlisle GM Nationals and you're watching it first on Classic Restos. Back with more after this. Welcome back now. Time for Tony. How are you, Tony? Very good, Fletch. How are you? Good, thank you. You've got an incredible car here. Tell us about it. Well, first of all, it's not mine. Okay, uh, there's... You're the caretaker, right? I'm the caretaker of the car. After the monkey's last tour, it kind of got kind of dilapidated there a little bit, and then uh, supposedly the story goes that a drug lord bought the car, brought the car to Puerto Rico because he owned a hotel which was called the Flamingo Hotel. Mm -hmm. um, painted the car pink and used it to shuttle guests back and forth. Wow. Uh, being the drug lord that he is, he didn't pay taxes, so... The government seized the hotel and all his belongings uh, after an amount of time. They had a uh, government auction. Uh, the owner, one of the owners that owned it and owns it, um, went to the, the auction, saw the car, realized what the car was because he used to watch the show with his older sisters. And he, uh, it was a sealed bid. Supposedly he bid, there were several people that bid, he, he outbid everybody else by a dollar. So. Um, he brought the car back to the United States and um, it had it restored at a, at a restoration shop in, in uh, Jersey, New Jersey. It's amazing, Tony. The car uh, built from a 1966 Pontiac GTO? Correct. It was a 66 Pontiac GTO and I believe the color was green. Um, it was a ragtop convertible. And all the customizing that Gene Defries did on this car is all metal. So, People so, think it's fiberglass, but it's all metal work. Yeah, well, that's, that, that's talent to do it all in exactly. metal. There's no doubt about that. What's going on with the blower? That just doesn't look real to me. Well, the blower's not real. Um, the monkey that used to drive the car, Peter, um, couldn't handle it. He couldn't handle all the power that the blower had, so the, the uh, producers of the show asked Gene Jeffries to kind of like dial it down a little bit. So he ended up taking the blower off and putting a fake blower on it. So it's just basically a 389 with a four-barrel quadrajet buried underneath all the chrome. Tony, thanks for your time here today and uh, catching up and showing such a unique vehicle here at the 2014 Carlisle GM Nationals. Thank well, you, Tony. The thing I want to tell you is if yeah. people are interested in the car, there's a Facebook page. Oh, the yeah. car is on Facebook. It's, on, it's called uh, Monkey Mobile, the number one sign, number one. Yeah. All right? And you can find out where it goes, what it does, and what the family's doing with it. There you go. Good on you, Tony. Check it out on Facebook. Thanks, mate. Thank you. Need parts for your American-built GM? Well, imagine being dropped in the middle of the ocean and the water around you is your choice for parts. That is the only way I can describe the parts here at a Carlisle event. Every Carlisle event gives you the opportunity to walk around and enjoy hundreds of thousands of parts from the vendors. It is amazing what is here. It certainly triggers the impulse spend. In many cases, you'll find parts that you didn't even consider needing. It's just one of those sections of each Carlisle event that you have to see to believe. Out around the fairgrounds here, 2014 Carlisle, all GM Nationals. We have Mike now with a 1947 Cadillac. Have a go at this. How are you, Mike? Great, Fletch. How are you doing? Good, good. What a piece of jewellery this is. Thank you very much. That's a real old, nice car for us to show up here. To yeah, the... 
I mean, do you drive it on the street? Oh, it's only nice days, you know, just trying to, it takes too long to clean it up if you take it out in the rain, so. It's an incredible car, Mike. Thank you. Thank you very much. Tell us the history of it. Oh, I once got 46,000 original miles on it, and I found it in Virginia, and uh, it was all there. It's all complete. It just needed re redone. It's kind of like a barn find type of a deal, they call it, and well, I brought it back and we just restored it and painted it up and just fired it up and saw the original interior. It still runs great. Mike, uh, what is it with you and the Americans where you guys just didn't do big miles in these cars? I mean, there's lots of cars with 30,000 original miles or 10,000 original miles or 60,000 original miles. In Australia, we, we, I mean, it's nothing for an old car to do one, two, three hundred thousand kilometres. But you guys have kept the cars in the towns yeah. where they were sold. Yeah. They didn't really go many places. No, no, they were pretty much stuck close to home. Uh, people didn't. They live in small towns. They didn't travel a whole lot, so everyone stuck close to home and just took care of them. After they had them for a long time, they got part of the family, you know. So they just took care of them. So. Mike, do you know who the original owner of this car might have been? No, I don't. I know he uh, originally started. And the car was found in California and found its way to Virginia, and uh, I'm the third owner, so. Is it the original interior? Yes, yep, it's all original. Yep, I repainted it, but it's uh, all original interior, and re the bumpers, because they were pitted, but it's, it's a nice car, it runs really nice. You wonder why I do shows in the United States of America. I just cannot believe how these cars just seem to appear over here. I mean, it is just incredible. The amount of chrome on this car, too. I mean, 1947, uh, the world changed. They'd just gone through, a, as we know, a terrible time just after World War II. And for Cadillac to spring it on the other side and build this. Well, they referred to it because um, they... Americans built the tanks with the transmissions, with Cadillac built the transmissions for them. So when they came out with this new model, they referred to it as the car with the battle-tested transmission. So it was, uh, and the, the soldiers, when they came home, they liked to slope the body and they called it the torpedo. So it looked like that. So it was a big hit. It caught on real quick. It was their sports car version, a two-door. Only 18 and a half feet long. But so. Well, it makes sense too, because in 1948, with the Tucker, they called, yeah. they referred the Tucker, the torpedo yeah. as well. So certainly the torpedo era. Yes, sir. Yep, you're right. Yep, it was all after the war. Engine under the hood. What size are we looking at there, Mike? 346 cubic inch, called a flathead V8. Yep. Yep. It's not a power for it. It's not a heavy car. It's got a lot of power, but yeah. it floats, just, just floats going down the road. Just. 60, 70 miles an hour, not a problem? Oh, yeah, no, no, no problem at all. Yeah. No. 80. 80? <laughs> yeah. But don't tell anybody that. Oh, no. <laughs> of course not. No, no. Uh, Mike, wonderful catching up with you. Love your car. Sorry to pounce on you like this, but I, I, I couldn't no, let you go. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. It was nice talking to you. That's right. Thanks, Mike. You're welcome to hop in and sit if you want. Oh, good. <laughs> you just give me the keys. You'll never see me again. Thanks, Mike. I don't know about the keys. But <laughs> Bookings are now being taken for the 2015 Fletch tours to the delightful Carlisle in Pennsylvania for either a Ford, GM or Chrysler national event. Then it's a return to the Motown city of Detroit and its region for the Woodward Dream Cruise along with private car collections, auto museums, the list goes on. For more information, if you can consider yourself being there in 2015, go to classicrestos.com.au and click on the Fletch Tours icon for more information. Back with more classic GMs after this. Time for Ron. Hello, Ron. Hello, Fletch. How are you? I am wonderful today. How are you? Good, thank you. You look wonderful. <laughs> I feel wonderful. Got to be driving this. How insane when it comes... If you look up insanity in the dictionary, there's a picture of this guy here in his car. Have a look at the size of it. Now, this is a shape by Chevrolet that I haven't seen before. Tell us about it, Ron. It's uh, originally a John DeLorean design. Uh, the cars were built from 71 to 77, unfortunately. And uh, unfortunately, this is one of very few survivors right now. It's a, a great color. It's a nice little shape. It kind of grows on you. When I first saw the back of the car, it reminded me very much of our Isuzu shape in Australia that we used to, well, we call a Gemini. Up front, it's almost like a Camaro. But wait, listen to what engine is in this little car. Tell us that. It's a 406 small block, 11 to 1 compression, aluminum heads. It's all balanced, ported. Parlors port matched. Uh, it's uh, it puts out roughly around 510, 515 horsepower. See about the insanity I was telling you about. Not only is he in the dictionary, this guy's got his own page. Oh yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. So you've always been a car guy, Ron? Uh, ever since I can remember. Yeah. I I pretty much have oil running through my veins. <laughs> um, the sort of power in this little car, you must be you must be running what high 11s. Uh, actually, it, it'll go uh, low 11s, 11 O's in the quarter mile at about 123, 124. <laughs> that's, a, <laughs> that's amazing. Uh, what is the green? What, what's that called? It's called uh, Key Lime Metallic Pearl. Wow, wow. 
it's a uh, it's an aftermarket color yeah it's quite an astounding shape as i alluded to earlier you look around the front and uh very much camaro they call it the baby camaro that's yeah. why because of the nose on it yeah that's awesome. Oh, well, Ron, thanks for catching up. I just, I had to show you this. I mean, it's, this is the first time I've seen this car. Having all that power up front uh, and this guy here behind the wheel and, uh, geez, eh? You, you'd have a lot of fun with it, Ron. Oh, I do. I take it out. I find a back road. I scare the living daylights out of myself and then I take it home and I put it in the garage and then I'm good for the week. <laughs> Until I get the nerve to do it again and then I take it out and do it again. These guys are never going to get old over here. It's amazing stuff. Good on you, Ron. Well done. Thank you, Fletch. You're welcome. Thank you. These full-size luxury cars, I really love these, these Monte Carlos. Welcome to the show, Rob. Thanks, Fletch. Uh, 1970 car. Uh, how long have you had it? I've had it for 14 years. You love it, don't you? Uh, I, uh, I owned one. I bought one off a dealer lot in 1970, uh, new off the dealer lot. It was my first new car. Wow. It just the memories go way back, right? Yeah. Yes, it does. My mom said, never sell that car. I said, it, she says it's going to be a classic someday. I said, no, they made too many of them. She was right. I was wrong. <laughs> Beautiful car. I mean, very sumptuous. Almost, well, it's muscle car inspired, but like I said, best of both worlds. Bit of muscle car, bit of luxury as well. Beautiful, beautiful all round. Yes, it, it was called a gentleman's luxury uh, coupe. Oh. No, I wasn't too far wrong then, was I? Oh, you were right on the money. <laughs> you were right on the money. Uh, what power is this? It's a 350. It's a, the smallest engine they made, two barrel, but and it gets me down the road. Yeah. <laughs> as long as it gets you down the road. Yeah. Um, Rob, I love the wheels on these too. I mean, uh, you know, the fat design rim, the big center, just gives it a bit of road presence, doesn't it? Yes, it does. The rally wheels, I think, was one of the best production wheels that you could order as an option. We look in the interior, the big seats, I mean, beautiful car. And uh, uh, the Americans have always been big on there. Bit of wood grain around the dashboard. Yeah, the burl wood is a real nice touch. It gives it the, you know, the class look. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So what's your plans with the car, Rob? Um, you're just going to obviously leave it as is. I mean, this is an unrestored car too. I mean, that's a that's a very special thing too. Yes, it is. It's uh, unrestored. Uh, it's been repainted, uh, it's, but it's the original colors. Uh, the, the seats I've had recovered, but all the rest of the interior is as it was wow. from the factory. How good is that? And the two-tone paint too. I mean, the, the, the white around the top of the turret just sets it off nicely. That's a very rare option. A few people in our club do have this. And it's uh, the two-tone paint. As a matter of fact, when I first found out, found the car, I told the guy that's not original because I didn't remember ever seeing one. So it is a rare option. Around the front of the car, Rob, around the grille with the shield, just yes. so nicely presented. Yes. As a matter of fact, in 1970, if you look real close in the, the knight's helmet, it's Roman numerals 1970, and they did that all say in 71. But I think in 72, they just put tick marks. Yeah. And there's nothing, there's no emblem on the trunk, but on the 71, 72 there is, and also they put the Roman numerals in there. Also, I like the, um, the vertical lights, too, at the back as well, um, almost like reduced size Cadillac. Yeah, it, well, as a matter of fact, there's another thing, uh, the later generations, some of them were turned into like a silver cloud that looked like a uh, Rolls Royce. Yeah, right. They just did some modifications on it. Awesome. But, Good on you, Rob. Thanks for sharing this beautiful Monte Carlo car with us. Uh, as I said, I, I do re I really love these cars. Oh, I'm, I'm honored that you, you know, think it's worthy of your show. Well, that's okay. We, we couldn't find anybody else. I had to get you. <laughs> No, I didn't mean oh, that. Here you go. I appreciate it. Appreciate it very much. Yeah. My pleasure, Rob. Thank you, Fletch. It's always sad to leave any Carlisle event. Three big days of showcasing possibly your most favourite vehicle ever built via one of the largest GM shows in the world. Carlisle events is about the atmosphere, the environment of like-minded people, no matter who you are or what you do. It's a chrome-plated celebration of some of the finest vehicles ever built back in an era that has passed us forever. But that era will always live on when we are surrounded by the cars we love. Well, need I say more? Just some of the 2014 Carlisle GM Nationals, and once again you've seen it first on Classic Restos. And coming up next is the Chrysler Nationals here at Carlisle. There's no doubt about it, a Carlisle event is about the cars, the people, and 
the excitement. Don't forget, classicrestos.com.au is the website that you need for the DVD box sets of the show and other Classic Restos merchandise, which make great gifts for people. Contacting us and joining us in 2015 on a Fletch tour and also contacting the major sponsors as well. As I say at the end of every show, until next week, please ride and drive safe. I'm Fletch, signing off from Carlisle, Pennsylvania, United States of America. Thank you for watching. You can like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash classic restos TV and watch catch up episodes at shannons.com.au. Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's Insurance, where you can sign up for the Shannon's Club and Penrite Oil, offering technical assistance seven days a week.